Now, hair cloning is about extracting healthy hair follicle cells and cultivating multiple copies of them in vitro, in a petri dish. You then take the multiplied cells and plant them back into the bolding areas of the scalp, which they then resume normal regrowth. In theory, this kind of treatment could be the end of hair loss. It's literally unlimited hair on demand. And did you know there's a company that is actually storing people's hair to be cloned at a later date? Well, it all sounds a little bit like science fiction, but it's actually being researched right now. Guys, you're not gonna want to miss today's video. Stay tuned. So hair multiplication is similar to actual cloning, the creation of identical copies of a biological entity. Can you remember Dolly the sheep? Well, it's actually something very similar to that. But whereas cloning is typically about copying entire organisms, hair multiplication makes massive numbers of copies of individual hairs. Now, at this point, hair cloning slash hair multiplication are umbrella terms. Because this is a technology that is still in its infancy, there is no standard method just yet. Unlike existing hair transplants, where you will get one of the two same basic methods regardless of which clinic you visit, FUE or FUT. That's basically it. See, in hair cloning, we're actually still at a stage where various companies around the world are pursuing their own version, and they're often very different. Which of these will eventually mature first and dominate the market is still very much up for grabs. But regardless of the particular technology, there is a fundamental difference that sets apart all hair multiplication technologies from the hair transplants that are already available. The hair transplants of today can only redistribute the existing number of healthy hair follicles on the scalp. They do this by removing the follicles from the hairy areas in the back and sides of the scalp, which are the so-called donor areas, and then plant those onto the bolding areas. There are clear limits to this process. You can only remove so many follicles before the hair density in the donor area drops to the point where you can start seeing the bare scalp. However, hair multiplication actually uses the existing hair follicles to increase the total numbers of hairs on your scalp. And there are no theoretical limits to how many times a single follicle can be multiplied. Hair multiplication quite literally holds the promise of unlimited hair. So in principle, even if you were a completely bold Norwood 7, a hair multiplication process could be able to restore a full head of hair. A major focus in many of the hair multiplication technologies involves hair follicle stem cells. These are special cells with the ability to develop and multiply into any different number of cell types, including skin cells, sebaceous gland cells, and of course, new hair follicles. What are the advantages of hair cloning? So setting aside the cost, hair cloning will be superior to all existing methods of treating hair loss, including hair transplants. So here's the advantages. You've got a minimal risk of visible scarring. You've got no side effects. The procedure is comparatively short and the number of healthy follicles in the donor area is not a limiting factor. It will be equally effective for women and the results could theoretically be permanent. What's the state of the field in 2020? So there have been many private companies and universities with their own hair multiplication program over the past 15 years. So now I'm gonna go briefly over the most important ones and give you an update on where we stand as we're making this video in May of 2020 today. In 2010, researchers at Berlin Technical University made headlines by announcing that they had used stem cells to create new follicles in mice. Despite their intention to replicate this in humans, the technical obstacles proved insurmountable. Similar research programs in other universities, like Durham, also died out. So the private sector is now basically leading the charge. Let's look at the most important companies. One of the early, more promising companies, Intercytex, wound down operations some years back. That company's former CEO now heads a new company called Hairclone. In 2018, Hairclone launched a crowdfunding campaign whereby members of the general public can invest in the company in exchange for equity and membership perks. And just last year, Hairclone launched the world's first ever hair follicle bank, where men and women can store follicles for future use when the hair multiplication technology has matured. The rationale of the hair bank is that the quality of hair declines with age, meaning that the younger versions of your hair will give much better results in the future. Hair clone have offered no date for when they expect their first patient to be able to use their stored hair cells. Replicell Life Sciences are a company with one of the most active research programs in recent years, and they've arguably drawn the most attention in the hair loss community. Replicell have teamed up with Japanese company Shiseido to promote their hair multiplication method called RCH01, 
which they plan to launch in Japan first. The RCH01 technology uses a part of the follicle containing the so-called dermal sheath cup cells. These cells are removed from the back of the patient's head, cultivated in massive numbers and then injected back to the balding areas. But in March of 2020, Shiseido published the results of phase 2 research carried out in Japan and they were very underwhelming to say the least. The men who undertook the treatment had meager hair regrowth, probably less than what is seen with minoxidil. So it looks like that we are still far removed from the moment RCH01 becomes publicly available. We recently did a video specifically on Replicil, the RCH01 treatment, and I've linked that to you guys in the description. Another Japanese research institute that has made a lot of headlines is Riken. In 2016, Riken established a joint hair multiplication venture with electronics giant Kyocera. And in 2018, Riken and Kyocera announced that they would be starting animal testing of their method. Sadly, nothing new has been announced since then. But what is certain at this point is that the Riken stroke Kyocera original goal of bringing this technology to market by 2020 is not going to happen. In the North American market, arguably the main player in hair multiplication research is Stemson Therapeutics. Founded just two years ago, the company publicized the outline of its technology this past summer at the annual meeting of the International Society of Stem Cell Research. According to the indications given at that meeting, Stemson hoped to start clinical trials in humans in early 2021. We'll have to wait and see if this turns out to be overly optimistic. Now, what's fascinating about Stemson is that they've been very vocal about their plan to deal with it to do with one major problem in the hair multiplication process. And that has to do with the direction in which the new follicles will grow out. Researchers have found that the new multiplied hairs grow out in all sorts of odd directions after you plant them back on the scalp, including ingrown hairs. And there's no point in having new hair if it's going to look funny. To tackle this problem, Stemson are creating a tiny 3D biodegradable scaffold made with a special 3D printer to direct the hairs to grow out correctly. This will have to be custom made for each patient. As you've probably guessed, hair cloning is not going to be cheap. And when you realize there's going to be stuff like a custom made 3D scaffold, well, I don't even want to start thinking about how much this is going to end up costing. Just last year, a partnership was announced between German biotech Tissues and a Japanese company by the name of Jay Hewitt. The partnership had the aim to promote Tissues smart transplant technology in Japan. In principle, Tissues transplant can also supply an unlimited number of new hair follicles. The transplants will take the dermal papilla cells, culture them, and give so-called neopapilla. These are the precursors of hair follicles, and each of them has the potential to grow into a brand new follicle of its own. There are also smaller players to keep an eye out for, companies like Rapunzel Bioscience and Steemore. We're always monitoring the news, and if we get a significant development from any of these companies, you will find out first through this channel. What about the cost? Well, at this point, none of the hair multiplication methods discussed here are commercially available, so we do have no details on the pricing. But as mentioned, it will not be cheap certainly far more expensive than a standard hair transplant that you can get today. Well, especially for the first few years where a limited number of clinics will offer it. So hair loss might indeed become optional in a few years, but only for the rich. When will hair cloning become available? What are our thoughts? Well, hair strands are seemingly very simple keratin structures without any complex function, and hair multiplication is clearly compatible with theoretical biology. Yet despite this, hair multiplication has proven deceptively difficult in practice. We've been a few years away for quite a few years now. Time and time again, we've seen very promising press releases that raised excitement in the hair loss community, followed by basically nothing. Or other times, like the Shiseido results published last March, what we do get falls far short of expectations. At this point, a realistic estimate is that we will need to wait until at least 20, 2025 to 20, 2027 until the first non-invasive hair multiplication technology comes to market. It could be later, but I doubt that it will be earlier than that. Moreover, there are still questions over long-term efficacy. In other words, will the cloned hairs really be able to live indefinitely once they've grown out for the very first time, or will there be need for regular top-up treatments to maintain the effects? The Shiseido results suggest that you'll need a top-up treatment every 6 to 12 months, but this is just one company, and its technology is still evolving. So only time will tell if hair multiplication is going to be a one-and-done type thing or an ongoing process. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you thought in the comment section, and you can click the video on the screen now to learn more about RCH01 
and the truth about male pattern boldness. I'll see you in the next video.